Welcome back to Inside City Hall, where we are talking with a special panel on the NYPD with Richard Aborn, Senator Eric Adams, Assemblyman Hakeem Jeffries, and Len Levitt. And uh, let me ask you, uh, Richard Aborn, the changes in culture that you're calling for, that several people here are calling for, um, they often run up against an indifference from the public, which has seen crime come down dramatically over the last two decades, and in a lot of cases says, look, leave well enough alone. Yes and no. Um, in part, it depends on where you go in town. Um, I, I'm in my uh, communities of color in this town all the time, and you certainly don't hear an indifference about it. There is absolute outrage about stop and frisk in the communities of color, even though there's a recognition that it may be a valid law enforcement tool. The question is, are we doing it correctly? And even in, in, in white communities, you do hear that there's increasing concern over the department. Yes, we all want a safe city. This is now an unimaginably safe city because this is a good department. But the third factor is when you tell people there's no oversight, they're very, very surprised. They just can't believe it. Mm -hmm. And when you explain that, they say, well, of course there should be oversight. And the shame of this is that we have to have this conversation in the context of these scandals. We share this conversation when there are no scandals so that we could, we could design this in a way that's not that full of passion, that we could do this in an objective way. And that's the conversation we need to have. And I hope we have it with this mayor, because if we don't have it with this mayor, you see what begins to happen. We get legislators doing their duty and doing exactly what they should be doing. We get uh, lawyers filing lawsuits. We end up with oversight by litigation, which is both costly and untimely. Now, if this mayor is not going to do it, and there's a consensus he won't, I think each of the people running for mayor should speak out and say what they would do. Would they establish some sort of oversight over the NYPD, something that's long overdue and is not a criticism of the department? Mm -hmm. Oversight is a fundamental factor in all walks of life now. It is a terrific way to deter improper police conduct. Uh, Len, when the, the 16 officers were uh, arrested for the ticket fixing, the alleged ticket fixing, and dozens of other cops went there to sort of cheer and they ended up you know, pushing cameramen and sort of making disparaging remarks to members of the public and so forth, it was a display that said to me more than anything I'd seen prior. You know, you can read stuff on a page about, well, this guy's indicted and this guy's arrested, but they just look like Hooli they were- Hooligans. I wasn't gonna use that word, but say more. It's true that, um, you know, the, the president of the PBA has really put a professional face on, uh, on the union. 20 years ago, the, place, the union was one step away from being an organized crime uh, conspiracy. And it's changed, I think, in a lot of ways. I mean, they really have made it a much more professional organization. But when you see something like that, it says to me, it says to me anyway, God, is this the same old, uh, same old, same old? I mean, it's, you're right. It's, it's, it's frightening when you see police officers running rampant like that. I, I just thought they, they, were, <clears throat> they, they were sort of tone deaf, you know? I mean, that... Ticket, you know, ticket fixing is illegal, right? You're not supposed to do it, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. But I don't, I don't I, I, and I've, I've made this clear, I don't subscribe to the same um, mindset that people have about the ticket, ticket fixing. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe officers who sh um, sold their badge, officers who dealt with drug dealers, they should have been reprimanded. But to um, criminalize uh, those officers, uh, all of the officers, I think is the wrong thing to do. Because if we're criminalizing an officer for official misconduct, then where's the person who rewarded official misconduct? And the person, that's a crime also. Mm -hmm. And it's not his aunt, it's not his uncle or his grandmother, it is affluent New Yorkers who had their tickets fixed. And if we're gonna haul in men and women in blue uniforms, then let's haul in some of those CEOs and other executives that benefited from Works it. Works for me. I do agree with Senator Adams that there's a, there's a spectrum of misconduct, but I do think that it's important to look at sort of um, all of the behavior that is troublesome as it relates to the police department and the manner in which they interact uh, with the police. The stop and frisk activity is completely out of control. The Fourth Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens, primarily in black and Latino communities, are regularly violated. The ticket fixing in and of itself is not outright corruption, official misconduct. My concern is that it's part of a mindset uh, with the absence of oversight that we've seen. Clearly, uh, in terms of the outright corruption, it's troubling and it should have already gotten the attention of One Police Plaza and City Hall but it doesn't seem to have gotten their attention. And the question that many of us have asked is when is enough enough? Is it gun running? Is it evidence planting? Is it drug uh, planting? Is it robbery of perfume warehouses? Is it illegal surveillance uh, of student groups and religious institutions? 
when is enough is enough. I think it's all of the above. So we've clearly reached a point where if the mayor and the police commissioner decide that it's still not appropriate for them to act, then we're going to have to consider all of our legislative possibilities in terms of us moving forward. Well, we've learned, we've learned uh, the hard way in some cases over the years that the state legislature controls a lot of stuff that goes on, like where the red light cameras are. I mean, there are a lot of things in New York City that are controlled by the legislature. Are you suggesting that yeah, well, you guys well, might? Well, we did, uh, uh, Assemblyman Jeffries and I, and I'll never forget this meeting. When we had a meeting with Commissioner Kelly, Kelly uh, previous Governor David Patterson, and uh, Senator Golden when we introduced legislation around stop and frisk. And this is why this is important as what uh, Assemblyman Jeffries is stating, because if the leadership on the top is sending the wrong message, then the officers are going to carry that out. Commissioner Kelly stated, the reason we're stopping black and Hispanics youth is because we want to instill in them the fear that anytime they leave their homes, they can be stopped and searched by the police. Now you have a young son, I have a young son, and Hakeem have a young son, young son. My son is an A student. How are you telling me you're gonna instill in my child and not other children? That can't be the policy of the police department. If the commissioner is stating that, then the rank and file is also going to state that and believe that, and you see some of the actions that you're see, seeing take place and manifest themselves in the police department. And this is not without consequences. So when the NYPD takes a valid tool, stop and frisk, and abuses it as they are doing now, they not only lose the respect for the rule of law, which is a big loss, but they begin to drive the community away. And there needs to be a healthy um, interaction between the community and the police, frankly, for crime fighting, because the community is an enormous source of information for the police, but we are losing that as well. So we're driving the community away, we're eroding the respect for the rule of law, we are alienating a generation of, of young black males, mostly in Hispanic males, because of what's going on. And I don't see what the benefit is out of it. And there's and one, one important note, I'm sorry, Lynn, but there's one important note that I think we can't overlook. And I think that everyone should go see the J. Edgar Hoover movie because they get an understanding of what's happening in the city right now. But one important thing, good people in this city have turned their backs on what's happening in the mosque, what's happening to African-American, Hispanic youth. What is, they're basically saying, we don't want to know the truth. And later we're going to review what happened during this period and say, oh my God, how do we allow this to happen? We are treating innocent people. When you have almost a million young people stop, search, and frisk, when you go through the pockets of young people, when you lock up people, young people for days in jail, this is wrong. And good people in this city basically stated, well, we didn't have a terrorist attack. I don't want to know anything else. That's wrong. Good people watch this program, and they, you've given them a lot to think about. So I thank all of you for coming in. And folks should check out NYPD Confidential to see the works of the great Len Levitt. We're going to take a break now. Still to come, we're going to ask two political observers if Rick Perry's gaffe at last night's Republican debate endangers his campaign for president. Stay with us.